All right, I think you're looking at my slide, Intersource Commons update now. I'm glad to get the chance to share a little bit. Just a little bit looking back just at the last year in Intersource. Uh, uh, it's been about a year since we did our last uh, summit. So looking back at, at what's been happening in the Intersource Commons really starts with looking at what's been happening in Intersource in the, in the industry, which it's been uh, a really amazing year of growth for Intersource. Um, yeah, Daniel, uh, I know you and myself, we've been involved with Intersource, uh, I think for at least eight years now. And I think you'll agree this last year, 2023, just had a really different feeling for me. Uh, rather than being some uh, niche topic, it feels like Intersource is just becoming more and more known and recognized and mentioned outside of the Intersource Commons. Uh, I feel like eight years ago, uh, when I first got involved, everyone that was doing Intersource, uh, I felt like we all kind of knew each other. You know, we could count on our hands and our toes who was involved. It's just um, been blowing up and exploding. And it's uh, just to highlight here, all these reports that I'm referencing on the screen that have been mentioning Intersource, uh, they all showed up uh, even just in the past few months, so even just recently. Uh, in September, the Gartner report on top technology trends uh, lists Intersource at the top. You can go out and do a web search for it right now. You know, Gartner 2023 top technology trends. The very first one listed there is Intersource. Uh, and then at some recent conferences, Open Source and Finance Forum, just uh, two weeks ago in New York, they released a report as part of that conference. And that report showed in respondents over 50% of self-reporting contributing to Intersource at least monthly, uh, some more so. And same, it's similar result to GitHub Universe. Some of you may have been there last week. The Octoverse report also had a question about Intersource in which over half reported being actively involved. And of course, high Intersource involvement uh, is listed in the State of Intersource report, which is sponsored by, by our organization, the Intersource Commons, where two thirds are saying that Intersource is an important strategy. Uh, this may not be news, all of you are here because you're also interested in Intersource, but just seeing the change is ama amazing. Some of it we may have expected or maybe more closely correlated with some of these open source um, foundations and reports and conferences. Uh, to me, the Gartner report was outstanding and amazing to see it pop up there. Uh, if you want to stay in touch with the latest in industry news and Intersource, on our website, you can sign up, intersourcecommons.org. There's a monthly newsletter. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. But you can sign up where there's links to the latest industry chatter about Intersource. Uh, so with the growth in Intersource in general in the industry, we've also seen correspondingly a growth in the Intersource Commons. Now, some of you may be familiar about the Intersource Commons. Some of you may be your first time hearing about it. The Intersource Commons is a nonprofit foundation of which I'm the executive uh, director. And Daniel, who welcomed us, is the, the president. Uh, this foundation is dedicated to the uh, spread and advocacy for inner source in the industry in general. Our aim is to be a neutral and central hub for the creation, exchange, and sharing of inner source knowledge. I just pulled the latest numbers as evidenced by uh, accounts on the inner source common Slack, uh, where we're having our conversations today. We have over 800 organizations represented it and uh, nearly 3,000 individuals that are registered there. A lot of these organizations have shared public case studies and explanations of what they're doing with Intersource. Uh, on our website, you can see and browse all the company logos that I have here on the screen and also many, many more. So it's just amazing and incredible to see the growth and the inflection point that Intersource is at in the industry where it's getting, I think, wide um, uh, adoption in the trial phase. And I think uh, this upcoming year and years will be interesting as we see this wide uh, attempts and efforts to integrate Intersource and see the benefits that come from that. And being able to share it here in the Intersource Commons, I think will be an amazing experience. So uh, as Daniel mentioned, Daniel thanks our uh, supporters and partners, our sponsors. Uh, the Intersource Commons is a nonprofit uh, registered 501c3 in the United States. 
And the reason that all of this sharing can happen is because of the support that we receive. Uh, so if your company is in a position where you want to show public support for Intersource, where you want to be able to foster and help to facilitate more conversations in Intersource uh, in your journey, you can learn more about our sponsorship program uh, on our website, uh, intersourcecommons.org, about sponsors. So a little bit about how this works, uh, how we work as a nonprofit foundation. Uh, the foundation really is a meeting place for volunteers and industry practitioners. And the way that we organize that time and energy that folks are able to put in is in our concept of working groups. I'm going to review a few of our active working groups and what's been happening this calendar year. Uh, to start with here on the screen, the Intersource Patterns Working Group. The purpose of this working group is to document patterns on how to implement Intersource. These are repeatable solutions to common challenges in Intersource. This set of patterns is uh, put on the website as an online book. You can find it there. And it is one of our most popular online assets. In this year, you see some of the figures on the screen, been over 100,000 views of patterns in the book. Uh, from over 8,000 unique people. And we've seen 13 new organizations participate in the production of these patterns. So a lot of activity, a lot of usage. If you haven't seen or been involved with the Intersource Patterns yet, I encourage you to go on the website, uh, look in our books section, you'll see the Intersource Patterns book. Uh, read it when you're looking for solutions or you have questions about Intersource. There may be a pattern that already solves what you're looking for. Uh, if you find that you are already implementing successfully one of these patterns, there's a mechanism to add yourself and your company as a known instance. And that's something that really helps with, that's really helpful. Uh, uh, your company can be you know, seen implementing Intersource and, and also patterns that have a larger number of companies that are successfully implementing them. There's naturally a way to for people to find that and to help those to be promoted more, knowing that they're useful for some, they're probably useful for others. So that's something that also really helps us in identifying which patterns are useful. Uh, since this working group is all uh, volunteer, uh, we want to recognize the efforts of everyone. And the Patterns Working Group especially wants to recognize as contributor of the year, uh, and Henry DaCosta Jr. Uh, there are many people involved, but Henry had a central and facilitating role in organizing the translation of the patterns, uh, the Intersource Patterns book into Brazilian Portuguese. So thank you, Henry, for your efforts this year. Okay, next, uh, the ISPO Working Group. ISPO stands for Intersource Program Office. This working group is for those at your company or organization that you're tasked with scaling Intersource throughout the whole organization. <clears throat> this working group was just formed this year. There's already been 27 unique organizations participating. And the goal is to collectively create materials, like tooling, training, documentation about for those that are scaling Intersource so that it's something that can be shared. Uh, if this describes your role or you're actively engaged in this activity, your company, you should uh, join the working group. Uh, and there's some already some uh, contributions to online books that have been created and more is on the way. Uh, and this working group wants to acknowledge uh, Jeff Bailey as contributor of the year. Uh, Jeff has done a lot to help to uh, facilitate running the working group including creating some of the uh, technical uh, tooling and online infrastructure in GitHub. So these materials that the working group is producing have a place to go and be shared. So congratulations, Jeff, and thank you for your efforts. Next working group to highlight is around marketing and outreach. Uh, the output of this working group is really visible because we're all here at the online summit today. Uh, which was organized by this working group. In addition to annual summits, there are multiple community calls every month that involve a presentation uh, by a contributor from the Intersource Commons or by anyone involved with Intersource can sign up to present at one of these community calls and there's a conversation and discussion that can happen. 
Uh, the monthly newsletter that I talked about is produced by this working group. Also articles, the state of intersource survey, uh, links to research that's happening in intersource that's on our website. That's all an output of this, this working group. Uh, this working group has put on many events attended by hundreds of people. And all of these events are recorded and put on our online YouTube channel, which has over 10,000 views this calendar year. Uh, if you, probably the easiest way for you to get involved is if you go through this summit today and tomorrow and feel like, you know, there's something that I would like to present, or I would like to have a further conversation on one of the topics here. Uh, you, any of you can sign up to be the presenter or discussion facilitator at one of our community calls. And there's multiple that happen every month. If you want to share in written form, instead of giving a presentation, the marketing outreach working group can also help you to add your company's case study to our online page that has links to, to all those companies and their case studies in your source. So you can also share a written case study, which people love to hear about. It'd be great to hear your story. Uh, in this working group, our contributor of the year to acknowledge is Guillerme uh, Delagostin. Guillerme has helped the working group in more ways than can be counted. Uh, anytime there's anything that's needed in one of these events, whether on camera or behind the scenes, even with short notice, Guillerme has always been willing to volunteer. And so the working group given the nickname, Mr. Reliable. Uh, thank you, Guillerme, for your contribution. Uh, this marketing working group has an active project uh, right now where your help is needed. Uh, the state of inner source uh, survey, the one uh, for the upcoming year, 23, 24, is being kicked off. Uh, we'll share this link in the chat. So you can go to the Bitly link or pull out your phone and snap the QR code real quick and share your individual or company experience with inner source. I think the better view we have, the more we all uh, can learn from each other and the better we can do as a foundation in supporting the needs of inner source in the industry. Uh, real quick here in my last minute, the last working group to highlight is the Learning Path Working Group. This working group produces short articles and videos training on specific aspects of Intersource. Uh, over, uh, you can also find it on the website. Great uh, short instructional videos. Uh, there's a new section added this year around being a project leader and how that relates to Intersource, like uh, managing open source and agile and relating that to Intersource activity. A lot of good information there, a ton of updates. Uh, if you have need for training content around Intersource, go and check out the content that's already available on the Intersource Commons website in the learning path. Use what's there or if what you need isn't there and you're going to create it, Create it as a contribution to this working group. It'll be posted on the intersourcecommons.org website where you can use and share that training content within your company, and then others can use and share it as well. So we all win together. Uh, this year's contributor of the year, Senthil Nathan, spent most of the calendar year facilitating and organizing translation of the learning path content into these three languages, French, Italian, Brazilian. Synthil pioneered our use of machine translation, combining that with human reviewers, automating a lot of how that works to where there are many, many more uh, uh, learning path content that can be seen in, in folks' native language. Uh, with that, I'll hand it back to you, Daniel. Thank you.